You're about to hear an episode that I recorded from just outside the grandstand at the U.S. Open, and the wind was uh, a little bit bad this day, um, so I apologize for any audio issues. We did our best to um, to fix that up, but uh, this interview is with Coach Jared Jacobs. Uh, Jared was there um, coaching Demi Shores and Desiree Kraftchik, who are still in the tournament today. Uh, I'm recording this on Tuesday, September 6th, uh, and they play um, tomorrow, Wednesday the 7th, in their quarterfinal match. So be sure to watch them uh, against Taylor Townsend and Katie McNally after um, you listen to this episode, uh, if you are able to listen to this before. Um, and if you're a few days late, they might still be in the draw uh, in the semis or um, maybe even the finals. So uh, in this conversation, I asked Jared um, a little bit about his background, uh, what the season's been like with Demi and Dez, uh, what they've done to um, kind of fix their rocky start. Uh, they started a little slow early this year, and um, he talks about a couple of things that they um, made adjustments on as far as team chemistry and strategy. Uh, and then um, he also works with uh, Bethany maddox Sands, so we talk a little bit about her career, uh, what makes her such a good doubles player, uh, and what um, we can actually expect from her over the next uh, year or so. Um, so uh, Jared is a really um, smart doubles mind. He's worked with, obviously, a lot of the top uh, doubles players in the world. So uh, without further delay, I hope you enjoy this conversation with Coach Jared Jacobs. Hey everyone, I am live here at the U.S. Open with Coach Jared Jacobs. Uh, he's here coaching uh, Demi Shores and Desiree Kraftchik. Jared, how are you? So far, so good. So it's been a good week so far for you. Uh, they won their round one match yesterday. Um, but before I ask you some questions about that, uh, as well as some double strategy, give people an idea of who you've coached in the past and kind of your background for uh, the listeners who, who may not know you. Um, I've, I've been in the game for like a long time. Probably 20 years ago, I spent a lot of time with Natasha Zvereva, who's a Hall of Famer, won 20 slams. And then I was away from tennis for a little bit and I came back and I started working with Bethany maddox Sands, who's a nine-time slam champion. And, and from there, uh, met Dez, who's local to Phoenix, and Demi through her. Um, so I've been fortunate to be around some really great tennis lines. I think it's helpful. Awesome, yeah. And uh, I, I think I first saw you last um, October during Indian Wells. You were on court training with... Uh, with um, Bethany Maddox Sands. Yeah. Uh, when can we expect her to get back on the scene? Uh, in, in uh, on the doubles court. It's really like my, I actually we've spent a lot of time talking about this and trying to figure out the, the best way to do it. And I think yeah. what you'll see first is they're actually try and play some smaller singles tournaments. Okay. Um, you may see her if she can. Play. We were looking for a partner actually for Guadalajara. Okay. So it's possible that you see her in October, but I think either way for sure, I think you'll see her full schedule next year. I can't imagine she'd have trouble finding a partner with her doubles resume. Um, but yeah, we look forward to seeing her back on the court for sure. Um, talk a little bit about the, the season so far for uh, Demi and Dez. Um, they've been uh, pretty consistent, one of the more consistent teams for sure on the tour, um, playing together, making some solid runs in several tournaments. Um, but yeah, talk about the season so far, what's going well, what's, uh, what you'd like to see improvement on, things like that. It's, it's funny because this season really has not gone according to plan at all. Actually, Dez and Beth were supposed to start together. Yeah. I was at the airport waiting to go to Australia when Beth was like, just decided like she really wasn't wasn't ready physically to go. And we sort of like pushed it back a week and then another week. And by the time we realized, you know, she wasn't going to be ready to play Australia, uh, I called Danielle and asked her to fill in for for Beth and and Dez and Danielle ended up you know having like a nice little run they looked really good yeah, together yeah but we were still thinking at this point Beth was going to come back and maybe play Doha in Dubai 
Um, and Demi had started with, I think, Angel Chan, and um, they didn't. They got off to like a little rough start. I think it just wasn't wasn't the right pairing for them. So uh, at that point, like Des had asked me what I thought about some alternative partners, and I Demi is absolutely one of my favorite doubles players to watch. I think he's got me brilliant too. hands, like, yeah. just a great sense of the game. And yeah. so I was like, Des, jump on that. Like Demi's great. Um, and so they started, I think, Indian Wells and, and definitely got off to a rough start. It took them a while to find, like, Indian Wells. And then uh, I wasn't with them in Miami, but I met them in Charleston. And we, we took, like, a rough loss in Charleston. Mm -hmm. But had a good couple weeks uh, or a good a good few days of training after that and, and talking. And then they went and did, uh, they went on a run. Like, the two weeks, rough week start, they went... Uh, Madrid, they won, and I think, or sorry, Stuttgart, they won, Madrid, they maybe made finals, finals I and, think, then, yeah. and then Rome, semis, and mm -hmm. even in the semis, I think they were playing Habs and uh, Kudermatova, and they were up like 6-1, 5-2, or yeah. something like that, um, before they got a little bit a little bit tight and ended up losing that match, but uh, yeah. I think from then... Uh, they really, they've been on a good run. They've gotten to know each other much better, understand each other's tendencies better. I think they get along, like they're, they're close friends now, which I, I think is helpful off the court. Yeah. Um, and then the grass court, Demi was a little bit, a little, little bit hurt. She was having some trouble with her back, so she took some time off. And, and then Des played Wimbledon with DC, which turned out, you know, to be important money-wise, but uh, for points was was not not doing anything. So we didn't mind sort of splitting them up for that for that grass run. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, they're making a push to to make year end. And hopefully, yeah. you know, we had a. A good couple weeks on hard in San Jose and Cincinnati, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll have a good run here. I like I like the form they're in right now. Uh, so you know, now it's the hay is in the barn. Now we're just trying to work uh, and, and get some matches. So you said they started off a little bit rocky, and then you had a, a good week of practice, and things started to change. Um, it sounds like they developed a little more chemistry and, and got to know each other better, like you said. But was there something specific, like on the court, strategy-wise, that they adjusted? Like um, that anything you can kind of point to, where like before they did this thing and it was costing them, and they made this adjustment, and now it's it's improved their uh, um, their doubles play. That's funny. I mean, it does started the year with Danielle, which is who's like a, an extremely strong singles player. Mm -hmm. And so you have to play a start like the, the style that you play will really depend a lot on the skill sets that each player has. Right. Danielle has like she's, a big serve. She cannot be more opposite of Demi. Right. So <laughs> I think it was an adjustment for Des, like yeah. for, for Des to play like when you play with Demi, you're going to be playing like much more traditional doubles. You're going to be looking to play two up, a lot of movement at the net, and a lot of it re requires like really good timing and sort of a, a good understanding of like. The likely shots your partner is going to hit, so that you can put yourself in the right place to, mm -hmm. you know, when you play with someone like Danielle, like you kind of just like yeah. closing hard. She's going to crush the ball, and you're yeah. looking to close and finish. So I think it took her a little while to adjust to sort of like the rhythm of the points with Demi. Um, so, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I I don't think it was anything specific. I think it was just. You've seen it more learning like you know, what, what serves do you like to hit in these moments like there was a lot when we first started of like they would they would call signals with each other you know behind their back and there would be a lot of like no 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 and you could tell they were just mm. sort of like not on the same page so you know one of the things that we started doing is, is instead of calling plays behind their back we started like just a little powwow in between points talk it out yeah. so that way if there's like a disagreement we can sort of understand why because for me the two of them being on the same page is like really important for them. Yeah, yeah, definitely important for really any doubles pairing. Um, what are a couple things that uh, you feel like they need to continue to improve on, or maybe something y'all are working on on the practice court? Different things for each of them. I think one of the things that we need to do better as a team is finish points when we're on top of the net. Like the match we played yesterday. Um, the score was really close, but I thought we were really controlling a big percentage of the points and just 
we weren't finishing points where we had sort of had easy volleys on top of the net and they did a great job sort of extending points and staying in them mm -hmm. so i think we need to get better at finishing and and i think the things that des needs to work on are a little bit different than the things demi needs to work on des it generally is just like getting comfortable at the net and committing to making moves mm -hmm. um demi getting back for overheads and, and making sure that she can finish when we, when we get the balls like that. Um, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, so earlier you, you talked about the serve signaling, um, which brought up a question for me. So how do you think about like if Des and Demi are, are playing a, a particular team uh, and they have the serves that they like, right? But you also are probably scouting the opponent and figuring out, okay, this is a particular return that's a weakness. How do you prioritize, you know, Des and Demi playing to their strength versus attacking an opponent's weakness? I mean, it's, a, it's always a tough balance. I think in any matchup, really what we're looking for is what patterns are going to work best for us, what combinations of serves. We'll pick sort of three or four spots for each serve on each side with each each of our player mm -hmm. um, and figure out like you know is is Dez's wide serve um, to this player going to be a good choice or is the tee or body a better choice like yesterday we were playing another righty lefty combo and Jill, who's a lefty, was on, on the deuce side. So we were really trying to, to jam serves into her body a lot. And we went away from T, which is someone we probably normally prioritize with the serve. So we're really just looking for, with the skill sets, with the serves that we like to hit, what are our best options? Mm -hmm. And then when we're going to go away from that and try and keep people honest, like what are we going to try and do on those points? And, and we try and... Ideally, we're getting a lot of free points just because they're having to watch where we're going and they're having to process. The more information we can make them process as they're hitting shots, the better it's going to be for us. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I feel like for people listening, if you can work with your partner on finding some of these patterns that, that you like and maybe have a list of four, five, six different serve patterns for each of you and then you can start to read the opponent and figure out, okay, of these five or six, which are going to work best against this opponent. Um, and that way you get that balance of playing yeah, to your strengths just, and then also attacking a weakness. Like, just for instance, like, on, on Jill yesterday, we knew, like, with Dez serving, we wanted to, to serve body on her backhand, and we know off that serve, the easiest return for her to hit is going to be the backhand line. Mm -hmm. So what we're really looking to do is, like, play I and have then Demi going left mm -hmm. or play regular and have her fake so that the net like our goal with our calls is always to have the ball come to the net person so whether we're faking I or regular we're always either trying to take away what their favorite shot is mm -hmm. or create an opportunity where our net player has a chance to finish got it um so let's talk a little bit about return strategy how do you uh, oh, what's your philosophy on return strategy? How do you coach that for a team like uh, Demi and Des? I, I love watching Demi return because she's so good at the return and volley. And she um, I actually got a video of her in Toronto um, doing that. And she like starts from two or three feet behind the baseline and takes the ball like like four or five feet in front of the baseline. Um, it's so fun to watch. But anyways, how uh, yeah? How do you think about return strategy? And again, like. Dez and Demi are really very different when it comes to returning. And I, mm -hmm. I like Demi is one of my favorite players to watch return. She does stuff that's like yesterday. She, the she, forehand return she yesterday. Went like five or six in a row. It was like yeah. they're at Demi hit a winner. She was there at Demi hit a winner. Like she, yeah. was, she was really just all over the serve, and she's still far in. But like with with Dez. Like she hits the ball, her ball quality is as good as any any singles player in the world. Like I, she'll go toe to toe with even the men in the mix. Like her returns are are unbelievable. So with her, I'm like, I don't even want you to. I don't care where the net person is, yeah. where they're moving. Go at the net person, away from the net person. She's just looking to go big, and then yeah. Demi's looking to create. With De, with Demi, um, she's always looking to follow in her return and get to the net. So we're trying to put pressure 
on their returns. Either she's hitting it and coming in, um, and we're trying to control position, or she's looking to come in on like the second ball. Sometimes first serves are a little bit tough for her to get in on, so we've got to be a little bit more patient there. But um, she she can just wear people down. Sometimes the returns that she hits don't seem like much early in the match, but like. Mm-hmm. You get later in the match and people are still digging balls off their feet and she's coming in looking for volleys. I think it gets tougher and tougher as, as the match goes on. So, Yeah, yeah she. Um, it's funny because like, you'll watch her play and if, if it's against regular formation, a lot of the time she'll hit this like slow kind of floaty return cross court, but it lands relatively deep and most of the ladies are not serving and volleying. Um, and then she just comes in behind it and they're immediately in a position uh, to probably win the point, right? Um, and then other times, if she sees maybe I or just wants to rip one up the line, she'll just blast the ball. Um, so she really has so many weapons uh, when it does come to returning. Um, and yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot of fun to watch. Um, and then Des is a lefty, so how do you... Um, she plays the, the deuce court, and then Demi's in the ad, so they have their forehands in the middle. Um, how do you typically coach that or... or think about um, handling a lefty-righty combo? I mean, it's always nice to have forehands down the middle, because mm-hmm. in doubles, that tends to be the most important important part of the court. Um, mm-hmm. Although, like in mixed, Dez is a lot of times on the ad side. Um, she can kind of move all over. Um, and in women's doubles, they tend to play line a lot more than the men do. The men really are going, like, they're nowhere near the alleys. Um, you mean like the net players? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in women's, just because the serves aren't as big, you'll see returners take a lot more risk. Mm. Um, yeah. So, you know, where they play, like I, I, I care less now than I used to about like forehands in the middle or in the, like. Um, so it's just really just like where you're most comfortable returning from. Um, I mean, the singles players obviously are always returning from both sides, so they tend not to care at all. Double players, when you spend enough time on one side, you tend to, and it's not even the return so much as where you go after the return. Like for Demi, coming in is much easier on the ad side, when she can kind of get around her back end and work her way to the net. On the two side, I think it's much tougher for her to get in. Um, so that's primarily why. And uh, I like her on the ad side. Um, yeah, that's what she did last year with Melkor as well. Right. So. But, I mean, she's, I've seen her play both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think she, she's best on the ad side. But they can both play wherever. Yeah, I, I had a conversation um, last year with uh, Coach Phil Farmer, who's working with uh, Krychek and Dodig right now, and okay. I think a few other teams here as well. Uh, and I asked him that because I, I think Krychek, is, he's the lefty, and yeah. he was returning on the ad side. Um, not today, but last year he was in a particular match, and um, the they way made, they he made pl- final of the French this year, they no? did, yeah, yeah, they did, um, and had some championship points too. It was a tough one, uh, but yeah, he put it like like he prefers forehands in the middle, but he's always going to prioritize the better return because there's a lot more you know missed returns or two shot rallies than there are three or four and so on. Um, so you want to prioritize that return over. I, th- I think it also makes a big difference. Like in the slams, we play at scoring mm-hmm. and a full third. Mm-hmm. So I'm more inclined to have the ad person um, be like the, the stronger returner mm-hmm. or the more reliable returner because that's where a lot of the important points get played. Mm-hmm. When you play no ad, you really get the choice who plays the important point. So then right. it's just like put your best returner wherever they want to be and, and let them go on those points. So. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so a couple more questions and then I will let you go. Uh, what is your favorite tennis book? My favorite tennis book? <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite tennis book. I like, I mean, I tend to read quite a bit. And I like books that I can relate to tennis, although not necessarily about tennis. Okay, like, that works. I like The Book of Five Rings. is something I read when I was really young. Hmm. Uh, and it's like, a, it's basically like a tutorial on sword fighting, actually. But uh-huh. a lot of the psychology 
about going into to battle or one-on-one -on -one combat and understanding sort of like the idea that you have to accept defeat is one of the two possibilities I think allows you to relax enough to play your best tennis. I think a lot of times when you're worried about whether you win or lose, it can get in the way. Um, but but in, in terms of like just strictly tennis books, I, I wouldn't say there's anything that really stands out to me. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's a good answer. Um, yeah, that reminds me of, uh, I think it was Nadal's quote at the end of the Aussie Open when he was down two sets. He, he said something like, I told myself uh, I might win, I might lose, but I can't not try. So he just like didn't even worry about the outcome. He was just like, I'm just going to keep trying and, and just see what happens. He, he has one of my all-time like favorite quotes. At least yeah. I think I've seen it attributed to him. He's like, making mistakes is not my problem. Being afraid of making mistakes is my problem. And, and that's what you see. It's like you make a miss and it's not a big deal. But when that miss starts to make you afraid of playing that shot again, yeah. that's when it can become a problem. So learning to play... In, in a fearless way, even when the stakes are high, is that's I mean that's why he's so good. There's really no better person to look to in terms of the ability to do that. Yeah, that's an amazing quote. Um, what is your uh, favorite tournament? God, I like so many tournaments for so <laughs> many different reasons. Um, I mean, the U.S. Open. I grew up in New York, so this okay. has always sort of been like my home tournament like i love it here we won in 2019 the mix um it was exciting i also love the french uh -huh. um, because there's so much like class and style and the clay is beautiful i mean clay court tennis is actually my favorite tennis yeah um friends i think there's things that i like about just about every tournament in every city um and i think one of the nice things about tennis is that like even though we're playing tennis and we're playing the same game but like in every city it feels so different so like mm -hmm. it's always nice to go back like Cincinnati we stay with the family there and, and I always love going back and seeing them and so mm -hmm. it's, it's nice to go back and revisit places and, and explore new ones all the time we never get two days in a row they were the same so yeah I think that's what I appreciate about it yeah it's a lot of fun I'm, I'm just starting to uh travel the tennis circuit a little bit more and went to um Canada for the first time uh, earlier this month or last month and um, yeah hoping to make it to the French and Wimbledon uh, in the next couple of years as well um, so last question for you how do we make doubles more popular uh, that's a good question I, I wish like I, I had an answer for you like I, I don't understand why it's not more popular I think it's so exciting to watch mm -hmm. when you watch doubles highlights when they actually show them um it's it's insane like i think they're the most exciting points in tennis i think mm -hmm. if it got a chance to be on like tonight we were talking uh it gets it's, it's the first time ever it's going to be prime time here at the open mm -hmm. i think if people just got exposed to doubles at the highest level i think it would be a huge hit i think the doubles product is every bit as good as a singles product and really it's not a function of how do we make the game better so much as like how do we get tennis to stand behind it a little bit more because a lot of times doubles gets treated like an afterthought at some of these tournaments when i think it shouldn't be i think it's super exciting i think at the recreational people that's what people play mm -hmm. um yeah and I, I think it's exciting because it really is like it requires it it's a team sport a lot more obviously yeah. I, I, t I still tend to think of singles as a team sport as well but um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah and doubles I don't think it needs I don't think the sport needs to do anything different I think tennis as an institution needs to figure out ways to get behind it and support it more I right. think it's a brilliant game yeah yeah I think uh, yeah I totally agree that's, that's I like the way you put that um where you said, uh, I don't think the sport needs to change. I, I think it just needs to get more coverage. Um, yeah, that's a that's well put. I, I definitely agree with that. And hopefully we can make that happen over think, the next five or ten years. I think some of the things that would help that they talk about, like, I, I always love to see the big singles names. And you see there's some tournaments, like Indian right. Wells, a lot of the guys play doubles. Yeah. Um, and on the women's side, almost all the big singles players also play some doubles. Yeah. On the men's side, especially at the slam, three out of five, yeah. it can be really tough. Yeah. Um, 
it definitely helps. And, and the men make so much more money that they really just don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if, if there were ways to either shorten the format or encourage people to, to play doubles, and, and really, like, people who come out and watch Federer play, whether it's singles or doubles, they don't care the name. It's just yeah. he only plays singles. So I think either we have to make a bigger effort to let people know who the doubles players are, because mm -hmm. for the most part, like, people have no people idea. Know, yeah. Or we have to find ways to encourage the singles players to, to play more doubles. Like, yeah. tonight, we've got Kyrgios and Kakanakis playing, and the Williams sisters playing. I love to see that. I think it's yeah. great for the game. And I love seeing, like, some of the lesser-known players who are, who are amazing players uh, get to play in the spotlight a little bit. So I think it'll be really interesting to see tonight. Yeah, well, hopefully with our uh, our Watch More Doubles campaign, we can uh, help move that forward uh, and keep growing doubles and making it more popular. Um, thanks, Jared, for coming on. Really appreciate uh, yeah, your time. time. I, mean, I know I don't know if you've ever if you ever had the chance to talk to B at all, um, but like if if there's ever anything I can do or put someone to put you in touch with that'll 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 help, like I'm happy to do it as well. Um, also, awesome. yeah. Awesome. I, I fully support your initiative. <laughs> Thank you.